Hi guys, it's your friend Ballistic B, and today I've got something special for you. I'm going to be showing you everything you ever wanted to know about this amazing Henlong RC tank and how to take it and turn it into the ultimate weapon to help G.I. Joe defeat Cobra. I'm going to be showing you everything about the tank and step by step how to transform it into the amazing G.I. Joe weapon it's going to become. And at the end, it's going to be linked to a video as well that's going to show you an entire movie dedicated to to this new vehicle. Let's get to it. This amazing beast, freshly unboxed. This is the 124th scale Henlong Electric RC M1A2 Abrams IR battle tank. It's powered by a 7.4 volt, 1800 milliamp lithium ion battery. This features multi directional movement with the treads. A full mobility moving turret with elevation and depression of the main cannon and it fires live rounds. It actually fires 6 millimeter BB ammo. Not only that, but it's got IR battle capabilities. It can actually fire an IR beam cannon at other compatible IR tanks that causes damage. And when it causes damage or has damage caused to itself. All right, guys, so here is what it does when you activate the IR cannon. Now, this is not the main cannon firing the BBs. This is for infrared battles with another tank that is appropriately outfitted just like this one. So you press this to send an IR signal to the other tank. And if you aim accurately, hit it and cause battle damage indicated by these lights here on the top. Amazing. Now for the machine gun. Again, IR machine gun. I want to show you this in the front so that you guys can see it. Absolutely unbelievable. Now time to check out the main gun and check this thing out on the battlefield. All right, guys, so one of the first things we want to do in order to be able to transform this tank, and I'm going to kind of keep hiding what we're transforming it into for right now, but we got to paint this thing. How do you paint it when it's got these tiny little lights that you can't cover up with painter's tape? You use Play-Doh, regular store-bought Play-Doh you can get at the dollar store. It perfectly covers the lights, encapsulates them completely, and leaves all of the area around the tank that you want to be able to get paint on still open. You see how it perfectly fits in the area where the two rear lights are and doesn't affect any of the surrounding body, but where you want to use painter's tape is on the main cannon nozzle so that that Play-Doh doesn't get stuck up in there. And of course, the painter's tape can easily be used on the IR dome on the top of the tank to cover it up really well. All right, so why are we taping things up? Because we want to use paint. What kind of paint do you need? Well, a little spoiler here. You want to get an original piece, or if you already have the original G.I. Joe Mauler, take a piece of that to your good old reliable Lowe's and get them to color match that piece and provide for you a half pint, what they call sample, of latex interior exterior satin finish paint that is, of course, color matched for that exact piece of the mauler, and that's going to give you a perfect color to use for what we're about to move forward with. But you say, okay, this thing, it isn't spray paint. Now, how do I use this and spray it reliably on the tank? Here's one option. You can use the Prevail sprayer. 
Now, this thing works on compressed air, and because it's latex paint, it will require you to remove the tiny screen at the bottom of the intake nozzle there, but I also couldn't even attach it fully to the glass bottle that comes attached with it because it wouldn't actually produce enough pressure to suck the latex paint up, so I had to actually detach it from the glass container and hold two separate pieces as I was spraying with it, and again, remember, because it's a small spray, compressed air spray tube, it's not going to last you an incredibly long period of time. You're going to have to buy replacement tubes to keep it going. You're probably going to be better off money-wise in the long run if you do any other projects, just going ahead and buying an airbrush kit and attaching this latex paint on it. Just make sure the airbrush kit can accommodate latex paint. Okay, so once you start spray painting everything, you guys are going to want to prop this up on something so that you can get to all areas of the top, sides, front, and back of the tank and run a number of coats over it. Remember to go quick and evenly and smoothly with the first coat. Wait an hour or two to let it dry. Hit it with a second and a third coat, and then you're going to get on to flipping it over onto the bottom to start getting some good coats on that. But what I should have done is gone ahead and taken off all of the wheels because these things were a real problem to do individually and separately. I should have just taken them all off in the beginning. All right, and what if you run into problems with the paint? What do you do? Goof off is a great solution to strip paint off of anything. It works fast, it works easy, and if you need to strip paint off of the tiny black screws that hold the wheels in like I did so that you can repaint them, which you want to do as opposed to layering paint on top of it because then the flathead screwdriver won't fit in, won't have enough depth with all of that paint in it. Use a metal wire brush and the goof off to help you do that. Here's what I did using a piece of foam to screw each one of the screws into the same depth, then spray on some Rust-Oleum two times flat black paint and primer combination spray paint onto the tarp that I was using, flip over the foam with the screws sticking up all at the same height, all at the same depth, and just gently tap them into a puddle of that paint, turn them over, and let them dry. And that's all you got to do. It's a quick and easy trick to paint the heads of each one of those screws with no problem. And again, remember, don't layer the paint because it will affect your ability to get a flathead screwdriver in there. All right, now once you've got this thing painted up, where do you stick the decals if you want to use the original G.I. Joe Mauler as your inspiration or really any G.I. Joe vehicle? Go to 3djoes.com and I've got the link up in the descriptions. Amazing website has 3D renderings of characters and vehicles plus all of the original actual instructions including where to put each one of the stickers on the original Mauler. But you say, wait a minute, I don't have original stickers. Well... Rattler Repros has you taken care of. This amazing website, again, a link in the description for them as well. They will give you all of the original stickers that look great, just like the originals, just like you remember them, and you can cut them out with scissors or an X-Acto knife to your exact o specifications. And once you get everything cut out, slapped on, painted, you're going to go from the original Hen Long Tank, which is amazing all by itself, and then if you use, for inspiration, the original G.I. Joe Mauler, what you're going to come up with is the G.I. Joe Mauler 2.0, codename The Mauler Strike. This upgraded version of the Mauler can do amazing things the original could only dream of. IR beam cannon firing, live BB round firing, full RC mobility, and I am going to prove how amazing this new Mauler Mark II, the Mauler Strike is, with an upcoming video that will be linked at the end of this one showing you an entire G.I. Joe movie and everything that this cool new vehicle can do. All right, guys, that's it for me. I'm out. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, but more importantly, subscribe to help us continue doing more videos like this. And there's more to come in the future with some high-flying projects we have coming up. Make sure you turn your notifications on so you don't miss those. Be safe, be fun, and believe.